In this video, we're going to show you how to create a top menu for your site. So here I am at one of our demo sites, and here we can see a menu. If I hover over one of the menu items, we will see that there is a sub menu. And if I hover over one of the sub menu items, there is another sub menu. So Bridge supports creating menus with multiple levels. And when we talk about these multiple menu levels, the menu items here at the top, we refer to them as first level navigation. These menu items here, we refer to them as second level navigation. And these items here are third level navigation. Now, if I hover over this item here, we will see that the second and third level navigation items are arranged in columns. So this type of dropdown is called a wide dropdown, and we will be talking about that in a separate video. So in this video, we're going to focus on creating a standard narrow dropdown. So in the first part of the video, we will be creating a menu. And in the second part of the video, we will go over some design options. So let's get started. This here is the site that I will be working on. And as we can see, there is currently no menu at the top. So in order to add a menu, I will navigate to Appearance Menus. So this menu here, this is the menu that I will be adding. And down here, we see several different menu locations. So over here where it says top navigation, I'm going to check this box and I'm going to save my menu. Let's refresh my page. Now we can see that our menu is here. So let's go back and add some second and third level navigation items. I'm going to go ahead and add some pages. And in order to add your second level navigation, you will simply want to indent your items underneath the first level item that you want to have the submenu. All right, now let's add a third level navigation menu. So I'm going to add some more pages. And I'm going to add these third levels by simply indenting them one step further. So here we go. So now we have our first level navigation items, our second level navigation items, and our third level navigation items. So I'm going to save this menu and I'll refresh my page. So these are the menu items that I have just added. All right, now let's take a closer look at the options here. If we take a look at this sidebar here on the left, we will see that there are several different types of links that we can add to our menu. So for example, I can add some pages to my menu. I can add some posts. I can add custom links. And I can also add some category pages. Now here in the upper right corner, I'm going to click on screen options. And over here, we now see all the different modules that we can add to this left sidebar. So for example, I'm going to click on portfolio. And now here in the sidebar, we have portfolio and we can add some of our portfolio items to the menu. All right, now if I click on one of these menu items, we will see a panel of options. Here it says navigation labels. So if you want your navigation label to be different than the name of the page, you can enter a different label here. The anchor field is used if you want the menu item to link to your particular section of your page. So we will be talking about this in a future video when we talk about one page sites. Remaining options here, most of them are used when you're creating a wide dropdown. So we will be covering them in a future video. Now I'm going to click on screen options once again. Over here it says show advanced menu properties. So here you can check these boxes if you want to see some advanced properties. I'm going to click on link target. And now that I've done that, over here, we have a box that says open link in a new window tab. So this is fairly self-explanatory. If I check this box here, this menu item will open in a new tab instead of the current tab. 
All right, so my menu is all set up. So let's go ahead and look at some design options. I'm going to head over to Code Options header. And here at the bottom, I'm going to click on Menus. Over here, we now see options for our menus. So let's take a look at these options. It says drop down menu item separators. So if you activate this option, you will have separators between your menu items. Let's see what this looks like. So we see now that our drop down menu has separators. You can add a border around your drop down menu. You can choose the color for your border. Over here, we have drop down menu background. So you can set a background color for your drop down menu. And you can also set a transparency value. The transparency field accepts values between 0 and 1. So if you want your background to be fully transparent, you can enter 0. And if you want it to be fully opaque, you can enter 1. For a semi-transparent background color, you can enter a decimal value between 0 and 1. So I'm going to enter 0 0.8. And let's see what this looks like. So now we can see that the menu background is semi-transparent. We can see a bit of the title image behind the menu. All right, now let's head over to Code Options Fonts. Down here, I'm going to click on Header and Menu. Here we will find typography options for our menu. So here we see First Level Menu. So these options here will affect only your first level navigation items. So you can set your text color, you can set your font size, font fades, and more. Let's change the text color. I'm going to choose orange and let's save. So now my first level navigation items are orange. Most of the options here are fairly straightforward. I would just like to go over this field here that says padding left, right. In this field, you can control the space between your menu items. So if you want your menu items to be closer together, you can enter a smaller value here. And to space them further apart, you can enter a larger value. So I'm going to go ahead and enter seven. And let's save my changes. So this is my menu now, and if I refresh my page, we can see that the menu items are now closer together. So when you're designing your menu, if you have a lot of menu items in your header and they are spilling over into a second row, you can navigate to this option here and enter a smaller value for the padding in order to bring your menu items closer together so that they will all fit into one row in your header. All right, let's look at the remaining options here. So here it says second level menu. So as the name suggests, these options here will affect your second level navigation items. So let's go ahead and set green here. So we see now that our second level navigation items have changed. Here it says second level wide menu. These options pertain to the wide drop down menu. So, a quick reminder this type of drop down is a wide menu. We will be covering it in a separate video. So, we will just ignore these options for now. Third level menu these options refer to your third level navigation. So, let's go ahead and set green here as well. All right, so now my third level items have changed color as well. Now here it says fixed menu. These options here will apply when you're using one of the fixed header types. So let's head over to code options header. I'm currently using a regular header type. So let's switch it to fixed. Let's head over to fonts again. Let's change the color for the fixed menu. I'm going to choose purple. I'm going to refresh my page. And now when I scroll down, 
we can see that this fixed header here is purple. All right, now sticky menu. As the name suggests, these options apply when you're using one of the sticky header types. So let's go ahead and switch to one of the sticky header types. Here under header type, I'm going to choose sticky. And let's go back to fonts. For the sticky menu, I'm going to choose a red color. So let's save. And let's refresh this page. And now when I scroll down, we can see that the sticky header has red menu text. All right, so if you want to learn more about the different header types, such as fixed and sticky, you can check out our video on how to set up your header. We will leave the link for it under the video description. Now we have mobile menus, so this is fairly self-explanatory. These options will apply to your mobile navigation. And finally, we have header top. These options here apply when you've added a navigation widget to one of your header top widget areas. In order to use these options, you will need to activate the header top. Currently on my site, I'm not using a top header, but I'm going to show you a demo site that does use the top header. Here it is. So over here, we can see a top header. All right, so that covers the design options. There is one more option that I would like to go over. So let's head back to code options header. Down here, there's a field called header skin. And currently, my header skin is set to default. So by having this set to blank, this is default. Now let's see what happens when I set my header skin to light. My menu text is now white. Now let's go ahead and set a background color for the header just so that we can see it a bit better. So now we can see the white menu text. And let's set a dark header skin and see what happens. Now my menu items are black. So even though I set my menu text to be orange, my menu is now black. And that's because I'm using the dark header skin. So the light and dark header skins, these are predefined styles and they will override your color settings. If you want to use your own color settings for the menu, you should make sure that you have your header skin set to default like so. All right, so let's save my page. And when I refresh it, my menu is now back to orange. Now let's open up this page. When I scroll down the page, there's a section here called code header. And we can see that the option header skin is available here as well. So these options here, they are local page settings. If you haven't seen our video on how global and local page settings work, we highly recommend checking it out. Just a quick reminder, page settings override global settings in code options. So if I set a different header skin on this page, that header skin will take effect on this page. So let's go ahead and set dark. I'm going to save this page. And when I refresh my page, my menu is now black. So when you're designing your menu, if you set up your color options and code options and they do not seem to be taking effect on your page, you should check the header skin field to make sure that it's set to default. So first of all, check the global option in code options header. Check this field here to make sure that it's default. And if your color settings are still not taking effect, then you should navigate to your page and check the setting on the page itself. So if you set both of these settings to default, your color options should be taking effect. So let's refresh my page now. And sure enough, my menu is now orange again. So thank you for watching this video. I hope that it was useful and that you learned something new. If you would like to be notified about upcoming videos, you can subscribe to our channel.